with the paid show. So if you followed some of my um, podcasts before, the beauty in the waiting room, we talked about um, on that podcast, like the idea that we're always, um, you know, we're always going somewhere. We're always having to make a decision about something. And yet we get there and we're like, now we're here, we've arrived, we listened, we obeyed, but we forget that oftentimes we're just being led to a waiting room and it's not always our turn. Our job was to listen because listening allows you to to get further down the path, but you're always in these little places of waiting. I know um, through clients and a lot of uh, sessions and just like following people in reality right now that um, last year and this year is not really going to be much different. I hate to be the one to tell you that. Um, there was a lot of changes. So in my own example of a waiting room, I want to talk to you about how, how it can be such a simple message that you get from something that you think you're doing that's just ordinary. And that's really been on my heart uh, lately to show that to people because when we're so stressed and we're worried about our job or our feeding our children and all these things we go into a normal like survival mode that's human nature but when you're in survival mode it's really hard to tap in sometimes and it's really easy to miss the message that the universe is trying to give you and so in my example I was born and raised on, uh, on my grandparents' farm. I lived uh, with a, a single mom off and on. Uh, she was single off and on in a nice house. We've lived in uh, mobile homes. I have lived in uh, really crafty apartments and uh, houses all in between. And I, you know, arrived at finally building a dream home in my dream state of, uh, of Colorado. And this is a great, great waiting room to have arrived in. And then spirit goes, nah, just kidding. And so we're sitting in the living room of my, you know, house that I designed and was very proud of. And I'm not a material person at all, but I do think that we um, need to value uh, those things that we achieve because there can be some gratitude in that, you know. Um, there's a lot of gratitude in saying, like, I um, was this little kid in a small town who uh, had always wanted to do more, and, and now I got a little more, and you can be proud of yourself, and it's okay to be proud of yourself. And so, you know, I'm sitting in the house, and I'm feeling all the emotions for that, and I really, really can't do like gory stuff. I don't like to have to be like this the whole time I'm watching because I can't like really, I have to know what's gonna happen. And so you can imagine like a top show on my list not to watch would have been like The Walking Dead, right? stay with me. And so I'm in my living room. Um, I was on the recovery end of a second major surgery and three years, uh, three years of after birthing my last uh, beautiful little baby who broke me, uh, really on this journey of healing and going inward and just not understanding what was going on with my body, much less the world outside. And then the completely crazy unknown pandemic hits, right? And so I'm in there and I'm like, well, all of a sudden I just want to watch The Walking Dead. And everyone's looking at me like, really? Now in a pandemic where the world like could end comically, we're talking, right? And, um, and you want to watch about like that literal thing happening. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I do. I just kind of want to watch it. And so I start watching it and oh my dear lord, like all of you fans out there, you are some hardcore people, but um, I could not, I couldn't see the gore and I know it's there, oh, I'm getting there, but I just knew I was supposed to be watching this, so I kept watching it and that, that's how I do things, like I'll hear something that I'm supposed to do and I just do it until I'm not supposed to do it anymore and all of a sudden, maybe, you know, I, I'm talking like a couple of seasons in, uh, I'm like, where is this film? Because it really spoke to me that, you know, not only was the setting Atlanta, but I thought like it had to have been filmed there because you just know from being in the South what the environment looks like. And um, so I look it up and I find this small town in Georgia that it's filmed in and I start researching this small town. It leads me on this crazy journey of 
uh, of what I was already feeling. I was feeling, um, you know, the anticipation of something really big about to change. And all of my nevers that I'm never leaving this house, this is my house I built, I'm never leaving um, Colorado, all of these nevers were coming up and I was, I was feeling that whole like pending doom of like, don't say never because all your nevers are about to happen and I know when that's about to shift and so it leads me on this journey of uh, feeling like I'm about to have to move and leave everything that I was so proud of. Uh, there you go. There begins our journey and right about the time that I um, am very clear on the message and where that I'm going to be moving and that's first of all in the middle of a pandemic and where being one of the areas that I said I would never go back to you. And it all came together. And as soon as I got the message, I binged, watched into whatever season that you have, like Negan, right? Negan, oh my God. So uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, if you're hearing me, I loved you in Grays, but you, you gave me nightmares in The Walking Dead. Is anybody else with me? He has this smile that makes you just wanna hug him like he's a teddy bear. But then in this show, he's got this crazy ass bat. Who did this? Like, why would you, why would you pick him for that? Because he was perfect for it. You kinda get it the more you watch it. But reality is, I just wanted a little bit more of him in grays. Like, I'm gonna need him to like come back to life there and give me some more love there to recover from my nightmares of him in The Walking did but my point was is we get to that season and I'm like nope he did it for me I can't go past it and I literally have not been able to watch past it but all of the time that that's been happening in my physical life I'm doing what I was being led to do I end up moving across the country where I'm in this new waiting room in the middle of a state that I said I would never move to again. I left a state I said I would never leave and I'm in this waiting room now. And I spent the first three months in the waiting room saying, uh, I don't think I got this right. <laughs> like, I think I missed this message a little bit, right? There's a lot of those things. And if I had not uh, been so practiced through the years of trusting myself, I would really tell you, trust me, that I felt like I missed this one, but I know that I know, and I know that I didn't, but I also understood that I wasn't enjoying the new waiting room that I was in. And so I want to talk to you about that. If you're in a waiting room right now where you know the signs were so clear that you were supposed to be or do what you're doing now, but all of a sudden it's so uncomfortable that you want to scream, just know that even more so that's the sign that you're in the right place. And if you haven't listened to my podcast on the waiting rooms, do that because in the waiting room, what I tell you is just like you, wherever you've arrived, however you arrive there, understand that the waiting room is for you to do that. You don't just have to try to find your way through a door and try to push out of it and rebel out of it because it's uncomfortable. Find a way to just be and know that in the waiting room there's a lot of people around you that you may not be able to see that are in their own room as well and the goal is to be able to wait in your waiting room until what is for you comes through the door, not what you need to do to try to get out of it. So take it, um, take it from me. It's uncomfortable. I walk it. I don't just talk it. And uh, you know, you get to your waiting room sometimes, and you're like, I know that I was supposed to do this, but it feels really, really shitty right now. And so, uh, you know, you want to second guess it, and you want to run, and you want to you know yell at God and you can do all of those things but as you do those things also find a way to just be okay and know that something's coming through that door of your waiting room for you and it's going to lead you to the next something that is another waiting room of greatness and that is just what it's all about.